So it's no, uh, it's no uh, secret that I may be the biggest expert in uh, New Brunswick history on two of the greatest despots and dictators and mental midgets uh, in North American history. Number one is Donald Trump. Let's not get into it because it'll take 40 years. All the different podcasts I know about his machinations through the years since being hooked up with the mafia back in the day. The second being a poor man's, uh, the poor man's Donald Trump or the poor man's, well, Donald Trump is a poor man's Harold Ballard. So we're going to talk about Harold Ballard and his battle with Dave Keon, which led him to go to WHA. It's not very complicated, but there's a lot of layers here. It has to do with the continua- continuation of trying to get the team together for the Summit Series in 72. Now, Keon, who would have been a longtime producer for the Leafs, he won, helped him win four Stanley Cups. He shadowed Jean Beliveau, uh, helped him to, again, the t- title wins, 62, 63, 64, and 67. Now, in the 67-5, he finally shot down Beliveau, and he won the Connie Smythe Trophy. Eh? Um, he only had eight points in the playoffs, but his defensive style allowed Montreal players to be stymied by him. Now, he became team pet captain October 31st, 1969, when George Armstrong uh, decided he was going to retire from hockey. Now, Armstrong did return to the Leafs two weeks later, but played for another two seasons. But Keon remained captain and continued to be aware to see throughout the rest of the years. Now, when the Summit Series uh, came about, Ballard had his, had his finger in the pie, as he said. He was in the background kind of getting in the year of Alan Eagleson and some of the, the coaches, right? Now, Keon hoped to make Team Canada for the Summit Series, but he was coming off to one of the worst years of his career. Now, he finished the 72 season with his lowest points per game average since his rookie year. Okay. Allegedly, the final pick for Team Canada came down between Keon and Bobby Clark because the WHA players were not available because Hockey Canada didn't want them. Now, it was believed, according to published reports, that Clark was selected because he had more points. Now, when Keon was not selected for Team Canada, the Ottawa Nationals of the WHA, the new franchise, made a strong effort to sign Keon, whom they had placed under negotiation list earlier that year. Now, Ballard, again, the asshole, had become the Leafs' majority owner in March 72, said that Keon did not provide the leadership the team needed during the previous season and refused to give Keon a big salary increase after a poor year, which was kind of the NHL owner's style at the time. Keon signed a letter of intent with the Nationals and received a $50,000 check from the team but the deal fell apart just before training camp. Keon later signed a three-year deal with the Leafs and rebounded strongly in 73, scoring 37 goals. Now, on November 22nd, 72, he scored his 297 goals a Leaf, passing George Armstrong and the round-out-of-town Frank Mahovlich become the team's all-time leading goal scorer. Now, but the drama continued with Ballard. He was pushing it and pushing it like he did with Settler, McDonald's, Roger Nielsen, everybody else. Early in the 75 season, Ballard again publicly blasted Keon, saying that the team was not getting good leadership from his captain and vowed never again to agree to a no-trade clause in his contract, as he had with Keon. Now, when Keon's contract expired at the end of the season, you know, he played out his option just before free agency, Ballard made it clear there was no place for him in the Leafs. The Leafs believed he had some strong young prospects at center who needed more ice time, and Keon was again asking for a contract with a no-trade cloud, a pure relief. Eh? The 35-year-old Keon was told he could make his own deal with an NHL team, but any club signing him would have to be required to provide compensation to the Leafs. Ballard set the compensation price so high that other teams shied away from signing him, even though the Leafs had no intention of keeping him. In effect, Ballard had blocked Keon from going to an NHL team. Now, rumor has it it was several million dollars, could have been as high as three million. Uh, could have been high as two. Talk about draft picks, but I don't think the collective bargaining agreement was strong enough to stop Ballard doing that because, again, it wasn't a pure uh, free agent uh, system in the NHL at the time. Now, the Leafs never released him, but he held his NHL rights. Now, in August of '75, Keon jumped to the WHA, signing a deal with the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Reportedly worth 300000 over two seasons. Now, the head coach of the Saints was the great uh, Harry Neal, an old friend of Keon's. 
The team in Keon played well, but the squad struggled badly financially. With 21 games left in the season, the squad folded. Now, Keon was expected to return to the NHL and was not included in the dispersal safe sale of the Saints players to other WHA teams. The NHL's New York Islanders wanted Keon, but needed to negotiate a deal for his NHL rights with the Leafs. Again, the uh, Leafs' asking price was too high, said to be several million or first-round draft pick, and it disappointed Keon signed with the Racers in March of 76. Now, the Fighting Sands were revived for the start of WHA's 76-77 season, and Keon was traded back to Minnesota. But the team folded for good halfway through the season, with Keon, of course, as leading scorer. Now, Keon was briefly the property of Edmonton owners, who then traded him to the Whalers in January of 77. Now, he will remain with the Whalers uh, through the rest of his career. In his 78 season, he was joined in the Whalers by Gordy Howe, who, at age 50, was the team's leading scorer that season. He did return to the NHL in 79 when the renamed Hartford Whalers became one of four WHA teams to join the NHL. Now, the merger agreement almost uh, allowed existing NHL teams to reclaim most of the WHA players whose NHL rights they held. Nevertheless, even though Keon was not protected from reclamation by the Flyers in the reclamation draft, the Maple Leafs declined to reclaim their former captain, allowing him to remain in Hartford. Bobby Hull later joined the Whalers that season, with Keon, Howe, and Hull sometimes playing as a forward line. Howe and Hull retired at the end of the season, leaving Keon as the oldest player in the NHL. He played two more years with the Whalers and announced his retirement on June 30th, 1982, uh, at age 42. Now, with the WHA numbers, just let's let's break this down for a second, ladies and gentlemen. That 72 season came off uh, three consecutive years where he scored 27 goals or more. He was okay in the playoffs, but he only had 18 goals in 72, and everybody deserves an off year. But when he ended up in the WHA, 76, he scored... 29 goals in, in 69 games with the Saints and Racers combined. Then had 27 goals combined with the Saints and Whalers in 77. 78, he had uh, 62 points, including 16 in the playoffs. In 79, the Whalers, he had 22 goals. Now, his final three seasons in the NHL, strong playmaker, wasn't scoring much. Of course, he played for uh, the Hartford in the infamous Montreal Canadian Series where Hull... The two Howe sons, Bobby Hull and Keon, made up one quarter of the squad, which was good for uh, the fans to see kind of a veteran version of, I don't know, the original six, as we say, playing on a squad like an all-star alumni team. So initial totals, you end up with 396 goals, 596 for 986 points, which was a tremendous, uh, tremendous total. Uh, he eventually ended up with the Hockey Hall of Fame in 86, Ontario Sports Hall of Fame in 2010, and uh, October 16, 2016, he was uh, named the greatest player in the team's history. You can tell Harold Ballard was dead at the time. Now, in the Hockey News Top 100 of all time, he's number 69, and of course, the Dave Keon Arena is named in his honor, Ruan Naranda. He was an inaugural member of the WHA uh, Hall of Fame. He's also uh, has a statue on Toronto's Legend of Row, and uh, the uh, recognition and awards are just too numerous to list. But I want to talk just about how Toronto mess mess with his mind. The machinations that Donald Trump does now in politics, Harold Ballard was doing that. Confusion by lies and deceit and emotional blackmail and crazes like this. I saw Donald Trump act like Donald Trump in the 1970s, before he or even was a Donald Trump, it was Harold Ballard. And Harold Ballard, I think Donald Trump must have met or read uh, Harold Ballard's uh, guidebook because there's a parallel. I know I don't like talking politics and sports, but as people always ask me, what do you think of Donald Trump? And I said, well, what do you think of Harold Ballard? And the Americans don't even know who Harold Ballard is. When I tell the Democratic Americans who Harold Ballard is, yeah, he sounds like Donald Trump's uh, grandfather. Well, when you sign your soul to Satan, you become a Donald Trump or Harold Ballard. And in the words of the prophets, I got a cousin in Toronto that goes to Ballard's uh, grave every once in a while just to check, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, 
That's my Harold Ballard anti diatribe 6,412 this month. Have a good day. Bye.